Hello and welcome to the first walkthrough lesson of the course. Now in this section we're going to be covering some concepts related to the AWS cloud benefits. So they really fall under domain one here, so cloud concepts. Mainly define the AWS cloud and its value proposition. So really understanding, you know, what are the values of using the AWS cloud versus on-premise for instance. And also to a point, there's going to be some discussion around listing the different cloud architecture design principles. So let's head over to our first question. So I'm going to start this practice exam on AWS cloud benefits. And the first question I get here is a, you know, a multiple answer question. So straight away, you notice you've got to select two answers and you get five options. So let's read this question. Which of the following are advantages of the AWS cloud? So we've got to read through these statements and try and work out, do they make sense? Are these a reason you might use the AWS cloud? And remember with AWS, they're often comparing against on-premises. So they're often comparing against kind of traditional IT, which is more sort of capital focused. And you've got typically a lot more money that you have to spend on operations of underlying infrastructure and data centers and that kind of thing. So let's go through these in order. AWS manages the maintenance of the cloud infrastructure. Well, that makes sense because yes, AWS do. They manage the data center. They, you know, they manage the physical storage, compute and networking systems. And they provide that to you then as a service for where you can deploy sort of higher level services. So I like that one as a good option. The next one says AWS manages the security of applications built on AWS. Well, that doesn't sound right to me. Now, AWS manage the security of the data center. They manage the security of their physical infrastructure and some of the software that they manage on top of that. But when it comes to the application, that's completely up to you as a customer of AWS. So that's not a benefit of the cloud. You've got to secure your applications, whether they're on premises or whether they're in the cloud. AWS manages capacity planning for physical servers. Well, again, that's one that makes sense. So whenever it's anything physical, so, you know, the physical hardware, the servers, the compute, you know, the storage systems, the network systems, the data center itself, that's always going to be a responsibility of AWS. So do they do the capacity planning? Absolutely, they do. AWS manages the development of applications on AWS. Now, look, once I've got two answers, I carry on. I, you know, you've got to make sure that you haven't missed something. So even if the answers are absolutely obvious to you straight away, you pick them out. Still, make sure you read the question thoroughly. This is quite a straightforward question. Some get a little bit more complex. And make sure you haven't missed something. So let's just check the last two. AWS manages the development of applications on AWS. Well, no, you develop your own applications. They don't do, you know, development for your applications for you. AWS manages cost planning for virtual servers. Well, they do for physical servers for cost planning and, you know, capacity planning and those kind of activities. But... AWS are not responsible for the virtual service. So those are basically things like your Amazon EC2 instances. So that doesn't look good either. I like these two options. Let's just go forward and check that those are the correct answers. And certainly those are the correct answers. And we've got a bit of an explanation here to help you and some links for further information. And throughout the course, I'm not gonna read through these in detail because I'm actually gonna explain the answers to you. And I'm also gonna show you some slides and the slides are really gonna help give you some extra information. So let's have a look at a slide now. So this one is the six advantages of cloud, and this is straight from AWS. So they say you can trade capital expense for variable expense. So you're paying a kind of ongoing operational cost rather than a fixed capital cost when you first purchase something. You benefit from massive economies of scale. So AWS buy a huge amount of equipment, and that means that because of the volume they buy, they can lower their price and pass that on to their customers. Stop guessing about capacity. Well, this really means that you uh, have so much flexibility in the cloud that you don't have to worry about, for instance, you know, guessing how much capacity you're going to need over the next six months. You just use what you need. You get speed and agility, which means that you can scale your usage very easily and you're also very flexible. And you don't have to manage or spend money on the actual data centers. You know, that's wrapped up in the cost of the service you consume. So you don't have to pay a, a big outlay for building a data center or managing it. And you can build your services around the world really fast. So you can go global in minutes. So moving on to our next question, the ability to horizontally scale Amazon EC2 instances based on demand is an example of which concept? 
So again, this is one where, you know, this is something that you can do in the cloud, the features are available to you. So that's a real benefit in terms of architecture and, you know, in using the cloud versus having to try and build this kind of infrastructure on premises. So which of these makes sense? Is the ability to horizontally scale an Amazon EC2 instance related to economy of scale? Well, not really, you know, that's about price points. What about elasticity? Well, elasticity means that you can scale something and not only are you scaling it up or out, so you know you have a higher demand for your application, so you need more resources, but you can also scale back in again, which means that when the demand is less, then you use less resources. And we call that elasticity. So that is exactly the definition of you know scaling horizontally with EC2. That is an elastic thing. So you can add more EC2 instances when you need them. And then when the demand goes down a bit, then you can reduce the amount of EC2 instances. And the Amazon EC2 auto scaling service will do this all automatically for you. Now, what about high availability? Well, you might need multiple instances for high availability, but that's not what you're doing. So it's elasticity is the ability to horizontally scale. High availability is an architecture where you can fail over or make sure that your application stays running in the event of a component failure. Now, what about agility? Well, again, that's more about speed and flexibility. So I think elasticity is the best option here. Let's just go ahead and check that one out. And that is the correct answer. So let's have a look at a slide. So here's an example of horizontal scaling with EC2 in action. So we have these availability zones and subnets within them. And then within those subnets, we have EC2 instances. And we've got four at the moment. And they're in what's called an auto scaling group. So that's Amazon EC2 auto scaling. And what happens is the metrics come from here and go to CloudWatch. So CloudWatch is a performance monitoring tool and metrics are reporting how much CPU usage is being utilized. And so a metric goes forward and says that over 80% of the CPU is being utilized. And so they're under quite a lot of burden. So CloudWatch then notifies the auto scaling group the auto scaling group launches an extra instance. So now there's a bit more resource available to handle the demand. So let's do one more question for this particular lesson. Question three asks, which of the following represent economic advantages of moving to the AWS cloud? So there are lots of economic advantages. Let's see if we can work them out. So do you reduce the need to manage applications? Well, no, you don't because you still have applications to manage in the cloud, you know, just as you do on premises. So you're not gonna necessarily save costs there. Do you increase efficiencies through automation? Well, that makes sense because there are so many tools available in AWS to utilize for automation. And automation, you know, can help you from having to, you know, keep performing manual processes, which eats into, you know, eats into budget because you've got people doing that. So if you can, automate those activities, then you definitely increase efficiencies. And that definitely relates back to the, the economic advantages of the cloud. What about reducing the rate of change? You don't really reduce the rate of change in the cloud. If anything, sometimes you increase it because people, you know, they leverage DevOps and agile delivery methods where they can release their applications faster and keep iterating. So that wouldn't, it wouldn't reduce the rate of change moving to the cloud. Do you reduce the need to manage infrastructure? Well, that's a good one. So yes, absolutely, that is a benefit of the cloud. AWS build the data centers. They provide all the infrastructure to you. They build the servers and the storage and the network systems and databases and so on. And then you can leverage those. So you don't have to manage the underlying physical layer. So I like that one there. What about increasing time to market for new applications? Well, you wouldn't really wanna do that anyway. You typically, want to reduce the time to market for your applications. The faster you get them out, the faster you, you, know, you make a change to your business that could be positive. So I like these two options. Let's just check on those ones. And those are indeed the correct answers. Let's have a look at a bit of a slide to get a bit more information about some of the economic advantages of the cloud. So these advantages come from AWS and they're basically in relation again to you know, having an on-premise data center. So you can decrease your total cost of ownership by eliminating costs relating to building and maintaining data centers or co-location deployments. And you only pay for what you consume. You can reduce complexity by reducing the need to manage infrastructure, investigate license issues or divert resources. 
you can adjust capacity on the fly. So tons of flexibility with how you can dynamically uh, or automatically change the way your resources are deployed, the amount of resources you have deployed, uh, and that helps you with fluctuating demand for your business. You can reduce the time to market. So remember, we don't want to increase it, we want to reduce it. Uh, and that means you can design and develop your projects much faster. You can deploy quickly and you can deploy worldwide. So it's very easy with the cloud to deploy your applications all over the world. And you can increase efficiencies, again, by using automation. Some additional advantages are you can innovate more. So you can, you know, you can spin things up and try new ideas out. You can spend your resources strategically by freeing your staff from operations and maintenance activities, hopefully to do more value add stuff for your business, more innovative projects. And you can enhance security. So, you know, AWS take care of a lot of aspects of security. There's still a lot that you have to take care of as a customer, but in a way it kind of reduces that scope a bit.